What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Bible Wisdom. Um, you know, I wanted to make a video about Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, I saw a uh, video on that uh, area of Israel um, last night, and I think I've seen it another time. But you know, I'll put, I'll try to put a link to that video in the description of this video. Um, if you're interested in watching what I watched. Um, it was through the YouTube channel Holy Land Site. Um, HolyLandSite.com um, is their website as well. But uh, anyway, you know, God, Jesus gave us a warning how we should um, be prepared that life is going to be like in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot which Lot was living during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I've kind of mentioned Noah already, but I wanted to focus on Lot today. And God said to remember Lot's wife. You know, um, I think this lesson could be applied to both men and women, even though the story features a woman. Lot's wife was... Uh, how people describe it is she was not ready to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, she looked back because um, she missed the city. She, in one sense, did not want Sodom and Gomorrah to be destroyed, maybe. And it wasn't from a level of righteousness where you want to have mercy on, you know, people who are... Um, you know, falling short of the glory of God, where you feel bad, you know, oh man, you know, they're going to perish. And you, it's from a sad standpoint, you know, the Bible kind of punishes her uh, in the story, which is real life. Um, and a lot of people seem to conclude that she didn't want to leave the city. She didn't want to be separate from the sin that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And that lesson could be applied to us today. You know, there's a lot of sins out there in the world. One thing that um, was said in the video by the pastor that was making the video live in Israel, um, he mentioned how the Lord came down from heaven to see if the wickedness was actually as bad as the outcry against it was. And the Bible doesn't give really any indication about who is out crying against Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, maybe it was Abraham, maybe it was Lot, or maybe it was angels who observed uh, the earth because you know the Bible does give seem to give indication that there are angels present on earth all the time watching in different ways I mean even um, the Bible indicates that angels watch children or, or just young people who believe in Jesus the Bible says that God's angels always see the face of the Father so, um, there are different descriptions to say that, you know, there's angels around all the time on the earth at different various places. Um, and then, you know, the Bible does seem to give some indication that we do have a personal angel that watches over us, you know, um, for those who are going to inherit salvation. Um, they also provide ministry to, uh, people. But anyway, that's kind of a side note. But one thing that he mentioned in the video was that God wanted to expose the sin in Sodom and Gomorrah to really see what was um, happening. And I thought that was an interesting point because um, that kind of give indi indi an indication of why God went down and I thought it was interesting that he brought it out that God went down 
to expose the sin, which gives another indication, which we all kind of know, is that a lot of sin happens in secret. You know, I think one point to mention is that, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah uh, is God, Jesus referenced it as like today or like the last days. And, you know, one thing in society that I've noticed that we've all noticed is that, you know, if people are as wicked as Romans one and two chapters one and two say, why does society seem so um, organized? You know, um, you can still buy things. You can still, you know, go to the grocery store and you don't necessarily uh, always see someone doing something sinful out in the open in society. And yet God has already pronounced a judgment on sinful behavior. And I wanted to bring up the point that a lot of sin is happening in closed doors. And the other bad part about it is people have gotten more skilled at hiding their sin from other people. And then on some level, they also think that they're hiding from God. And so that's why when you're out and about, maybe you're on the job, you know, you may hear people kind of cuss or, you know, say a few derogatory things or sinful things. But a lot of the sin that's happening is in secret places. You know, of course, there's probably other people sinning with them. But for the most part, you know, it's happening in secret places. And so I thought that was one thing to mention is that, um, you know, maybe if we're doubting, oh, are we in the last days or, um, you know, how bad is it, you know, in the world? I think one thing to note is that, you know, it's happening in secret. And I thought the point that was made in the, in the video was that God exposed it when the angels came to, uh, visit Lot, you know, they all gathered around Lot's house because they wanted to sin. And so God exposed it because one, it was made known to the angels who were obviously there, but two, you know, it, it came out into the public. And of course we do hear things happening in the news. You know, we hear stories of maybe police officers, you know, go, uh, they deal with a lot of these scenes, you know, poli people call the police and, you know, expose a lot of this stuff. But anyway, you know, I wanted to make note that, um, God said that it's going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah in the last days. And of course, we don't know when Jesus is going to exactly return. It could be years from now. Um, and so I think there are some lessons that we should remember every day is that one, we need to be in the Bible every day, you know, put on some sort of audio Bible, some sort of, uh, biblical teaching every single day multiple times a day, um, if you can, because that's how we are able to see spiritually, because if we don't do that, um, we get less and less, res um, we don't resist sin as much. Um, and then if you don't get into your Bible, something sinful, you could think, oh, maybe it's okay for me to do. And you can fall into sin that way. Um, and of course, Bible reading is not the only thing that we should be doing. Um, prayer, remembering to pray to God um, and ask him not to lead you into temptation. Of course, scripture says that God does not tempt anyone. So um, there could be some dynamics to why we would pray, lead us not into temptation. Um, but maybe that's not for this video. Um, so anyway, um, I think there's some other things to do is continue to resist sin. You know, um, let's say you're looking at porn or 
you know, maybe you are dating someone and you guys are starting to get more physical or um, maybe you're starting to drink more alcohol. Maybe you're starting to cuss more. Um, maybe you're starting to watch a little bit more bad shows on television. And I think the purpose, the point that I wanted to make is we need to continue to resist sin um, because one thing that Jesus did say is that he will say, depart from me um, to those who practice lawlessness. And I think practice means repetitive sin. And I would say, you know, um, com not completely resisting it to the point where you don't do it anymore. And so I, I personally hold the belief that there's no sin that we can't overcome, whether that be in our thinking, maybe we have bad thoughts, or um, uh, whatever the sin may be. I, I believe if we apply ourselves and apply to the word of God and really press in on asking God to deliver us, you know, we don't need a lot of faith, but, um, you know, I believe that we can be delivered if we just continue, you know? And so, um, we have to continue to resist, um, sin and the different things that can lead to sin. Um, one helpful thing, well, the whole Bible is helpful, but one thing that I thought of just recently right now is that, um, the Bible says, make no provision for the flesh, which means, you know, don't think about how you can do that sinful thing that you're going to be doing. When you, when you feel like your mind is drifting to something sinful, um, whether that be, you know, when you're out and about looking at a person in the wrong way, or, um, you know, if your mind starts to think about, um, something sinful, you know, changing what you think about, um, trying to resist it in your mind, you know, maybe saying, oh, you know, that's not for me to do, you know, oh, oh, you know, I know there's a punishment for that sin, so I don't want to do that, you know, um, so, um, hopefully that's helpful, um, but I, I, one point that Jesus did make in the gospels, he said that, um, if we continue in his teaching, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. And so, um, he said it will, and he implies that it seems like it might take some time. He didn't necessarily give a timeline. Um, and so I believe that, you know, if we do find ourselves, oh, I, I sinned, you know, we have to confess it and continue to turn away from it. And I believe that God will eventually give us the victory over it. Um, and so one thing we can note from Sodom and Gomorrah is Lot, uh, in the book of Peter, it says that his righteous soul was vexed. He was troubled because he heard the different things that people were talking about. Um, and to some level, the sin um, became not really secret anymore. So Lot, you know, I think, you know, like the point that I was making earlier that sin is somewhat secret, but clearly Sodom and Gomorrah, what it turned out to be was sin was no longer very secret. Maybe obviously, you know, um, it might still happen somewhat behind closed doors, but the way it talked about Lot, it seems to indicate that, um, you know, he heard a lot of the things that they were doing. You know, they were talking about it. Um, maybe they were planning on doing it, you know, um, cause, uh, you know, it says that he was troubled by hearing and then it says also seen. So he saw 
actually what they were doing. So at some level, it wasn't in secret anymore, the sin. And so I think that's what we can expect society to get to is that, you know, I know I've seen videos where there's more and more things that are happening that the Bible condemns that are sinful, but people are more open about it. And there, I think what is happening is people are trying to organize it where it's, um, I guess the word that comes out, comes to mind is professional, you know, for example, you know, if you go out to a restaurant, you don't want to eat at a restaurant that looks, you know, dirty and broke down you would most likely say, oh, I don't want to eat there. You know, if it's, especially if it's a new restaurant, you know, you say, oh, you know, I don't want to eat there. But, um, you know, you've probably been to a restaurant that looks, you know, new or it's just built, but their food is bad, you know? And so I think that's kind of an example to say, you know, I think what sin is going to look like in Sodom and Gomorrah is they're trying to fix it up, you know, make it look organized, you know, make it look, um, you know, kind of more, um, uh, professional, not dirty. And so, um, you can see a lot of that with, um, different sins in the world. But one last thing that, um, the, video that I saw on Sodom and Gomorrah, again, I'll try to leave the link into the description of this video to that video that I watched. Um, he said that homosexuality was rampant in Sodom and Gomorrah. And he brought out a point that, um, that's one of the biggest reasons why God condemned Sodom and Gomorrah and Sodom and Gomorrah was left as an example for those who would live later. And he said that homosexuality was just so uh, massive. It was going on at a, at a really big scale. And it was so wicked that that's one of the biggest things why God condemned those two cities. And he was making the point that that was an indicator to show the level of wickedness because it seems like God sort of lets, he punishes a lot all the time, but it seems like certain things he has a little bit more tolerance for and other things, you know, he'll either destroy the whole world or he'll destroy a certain city. And it seems like uh, the point that the pastor was making in the video was that homosexuality was one of those things that uh, God just wouldn't have going on for a long time. Uh, and that was one of the indicators that the level of wickedness, you know, let's say the cup if you pour water into a cup, you know, you can have different levels and the cup was pretty full. And so, um, that's the point that I wanted to bring out is that, um, maybe if you look around society, um, you can get a level of how much wickedness we are in and, um, maybe how much time we have until, Jesus, I believe in the rapture. Um, I believe that Jesus makes a few points in scripture in Revelation 3.10, where he was spare us from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world. But my point is uh, that I think the level of homosexuality that is happening, which God calls an abomination, it's a very strong word that's not really used for any other sin. For very few sins, um, the word abomination is used. And um, I think that is an indication of um, kind of how society is doing. So anyway, um, 
I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I think one thing that we, I just want to review for this video is that we need to grow in our knowledge of Jesus. You know, don't just read the new, the old Testament, you know, really focus on the new Testament because it has a lot of new things that we should be doing. And, um, you know, Jesus, uh, he told the rich man, uh, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments, which he said, you know, don't murder, don't steal, don't commit adultery, honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. And, um, Jesus also said to the rich man, you know, if you want to be perfect, go sell all you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And so I think that's the only indication in scripture um, about how to be perfect. Other than there's other few, there's other um, indications that Jesus gives like um, love is the bond of perfection. Um, and then obviously putting your faith in Jesus, um, he makes perfect everyone who is in the process of being sanctified and sanctified sanctification it just means you're cleaning yourself up and you're becoming more free from sin so that's what sanctification means it means you're in the process of being more free from the sins um, that you may have used to do or new sins that may be enticing you so anyway thanks for watching this video um, and uh, if you want, you can watch the other video that I'll try to leave a link to in the description. So thanks, and I will talk to you on the next video. See ya!